What's up everyone, Willie Apple here, and today Apple has released iOS 17 Beta 8 to developers and public beta testers. On my iPhone 14 Pro, it came in at 572 megabytes, and this is very likely gonna be the final beta of iOS 17 before it comes out to everyone. I will explain more in a bit. If we were to take a look at the build number and settings journal then about, you're gonna see we have 21A5326A. We have an A at the end of the build number, which is indicating that Apple has compiled this build one time and worked successfully for the first time, which is to be expected from a first beta. It is a common misconception that the A at the end of the build number means that it is the final beta. Is that Apple compiled this build once and they were happy with it. Next, let's take a look at our Geekbench results. Alright, this Geekbench score is a little bit interesting. So on the single core, I got a 2600. In beta 7, I got a 2628. But on the multi-core in this beta, I got a 6277. But in beta 7, I got a 6711. So for some reason, this is significantly lower. Also, it could depend on the conditions. I'm not sure why it would be lower, but it is something that you should know about before you were to update to beta 8. Now let's take a look at what else Apple has released. Apple has released iPadOS 17 Beta 8, WatchOS 10 Beta 8, TVOS 17 Beta 8, HomePod Software 17 Beta 7, and yeah, that's it. We did not get a macOS Sonoma today. But we will talk about macOS Sonoma later in this video if you are interested in Sonoma. Now what is new here in this 8th beta? Well, there isn't much, but there are a couple of kind of minor changes that I'd like to show you. The first one has to do with the music widget. So, if we were to take a look at the button right here, you're going to see that the play button is a little bit smaller now. Now it's very faint, and I did not notice it at first until I looked at screenshots comparing it to beta 7 and beta 8, but it is a lot smaller in this beta, but it is still tappable as you can see there. Don't want to get copyrighted. Now we got one more change related to the iPad. Alright, now that we have our iPad right here, if we were to take a look in Safari and then go to the side right here, and then look down here, you're gonna see this brand new section that says profile. And it is an easy way to switch between profiles, for example, to my YouTube one, or I could also go to the, my development one, or go straight to my school one. This is a much more convenient way of switching profiles. And we also got a little bug fix with profiles. So if I were in my school profile and then I just search something up and I would tap on the school button right here, then switch the profile to personal, it actually switches back now. Whereas before, if I were in a profile and then it would switch it, it would keep me on that page that I was just on. So this is a little fix inside of beta 8 that I noticed. And it's a lot nicer that Apple has finally fixed this. It was a pretty big annoyance for me since it was not consistent with macOS. But yeah, other than those two things, I could not find anything else. Now let's discuss other things about Apple. Apple today has announced a brand new Apple event. So if I were to go to the Apple event right here and learn more, you could see it takes place on November 12th. And this is where we will expect the brand new iPhone 15. So if you're in the market for an iPhone 14, I would wait right now because the iPhone 14s will get cheaper. Same with the 13s and they might add USB-C. There's been a couple rumors about that. But this time around, we did not get an Easter egg. We got an animated logo. So if I were to tap on it, nothing happens. And yeah, you see it doesn't open up the AR view or anything. I guess Apple was just doing that for a while, but they aren't doing it anymore. But yeah, it is animated. Still nice, but I much prefer the Easter egg. Let me know down below in the comments if you prefer this or the Easter egg. Now, what can we expect next from Apple? So I would expect a macOS Sonoma Beta 7 as soon as tomorrow. The reason is because there are references in Xcode of a Beta 7, and it also has an A at the end of the build number. So I'll put the build number up there. And in this macOS Sonoma beta that we currently have, beta 6, it has a B at the end of the build number, which means that Apple took one time to compile. They did not add the iOS 16.1 changes yet. So the build number did not go back at all. I would not expect Apple to be putting Safari 17.1 in this beta, mostly because I still don't believe it's delayed, but it also could come out next week or on the 5th right here. And then all the RCs would come out on the 12th right here. And having this build number reference in Xcode and beta 7 being referenced in here, since we got a brand new Xcode beta today, tells me that we are getting macOS Sonoma beta 7 as soon as tomorrow. We could also, once again, get it on the 5th right here. I'm still a firm believer that Apple has not delayed macOS Sonoma. They are just trying to surprise us, but I kind of know it already that they are not delaying it. 
I just hope that ages well. And then as for a final release, I would expect it on the 18th right here. Now there's one more thing I'd like to tell you about when updating to this beta of iOS 17. You're gonna, you may notice that a, a couple of settings in privacy and security, location services, and then system services, have toggled themselves on. So I did not have all of these on, I know that for sure. But these down here look about the same. But I know for a fact I did not have all of these on. So just letting you know that you might notice some of these are on, you might need to turn them off if you turn them off for a specific reason. Nothing too major here. Now, if we talk about performance and battery life, I think Geekbench lied to us because this feels like a final release. I think there was just a little weird error inside of Geekbench or the conditions were very weird. I would expect in the RC, we will get a brand new, better Geekbench score because it is just weird that Apple has changed it up a bit. Now I'd like to show you the one and only bug I still have inside of iOS 17. And there it is right there. I still have this inside of iOS 17 and it is probably not gonna get fixed until 17.1 or even at this point, iOS 69. So just letting you know if you're wondering if this is fixed or not, my one and only issue, it isn't. But just to let you know, this is an iOS 16.4 and 16.5 and 16.6 and will likely be in 16.7. Just letting you know right there. My battery life is pretty good. It's on 31% because somebody left my phone on, which was likely me, and they kind of pranked me a little bit. So and my phone was on and that's why my battery was pretty low. And if you're wondering if why there were not many features, it's because Apple already has the initial version of iOS 17 for the iPhone 15 already compiled. Now it's likely gonna be the previous, based off the previous beta instead of this one, but only time will tell. And if you're expecting new features in the RC, I would not. The next time we're likely gonna get a brand new feature is inside of iOS 17.1, which if we were to take a look at our calendar right here, I would expect it on the week of the 19th, most likely on the 19th itself. We, we will start beta testing. However, we could also skip a week and we'll start beta testing here on the 25th. Now, should you go ahead and press the update now button if you are on iOS 16, I would go ahead. This does not feel like a beta. This feels like a smooth release, despite it saying beta eight at the end. I'll just want to make sure all the bugs are completely clear. And I guess doing it from beta eight and if Apple finds a bug that is pretty important to fix, they will make a beta nine, which is very highly unlikely. Beta eight is a very solid release. So if you're interested in updating from iOS 16, I would go ahead if you just really can't wait to take advantage of a feature that you really want to use inside of iOS 17. Overall, this was a pretty solid release of iOS 17. I just can't wait for it to come out to everyone since I've only used name drop once. I've not used name drop ever since I tested it inside of beta four. And you can't use name drop if you're using an Apple Watch right here because the Apple Watch needs to be logged into a different Apple ID and I just don't want to mess with that at all because I would need to like install iOS 17 on another device and it's just not worth it to test it out on the Apple Watch. But yeah, I hope I can see you tomorrow with a macOS Sonoma, if not next week. And thanks for watching. Comment, like, subscribe, share it with your friends, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!